Now believe it or not, if you had a single strand of wire hooked up to a microamp meter and you took a magnet and spun it around inside that wire, you would actually generate electricity which you could measure. Now if you had a coil of wire, you'd generate a great deal more power. So what I have in my hand here is a coil of wire and this coil of wire, believe it or not, has many miles of wire in it. It's a very thin gauge wire. And uh, I'm going to pass a magnet through the center of this coil and you watch this neon light on top. You wouldn't think it'd be that easy to generate electricity, but that's really all there is to it. You simply pass the magnet through a coil of wire and you're generating electricity. Now one thing you might have noticed, I can't just set the magnet in the middle here. It has to be moving. You have to have a moving magnetic field or you don't generate any power. Okay, in this part of the video I'm going to do something a little bit different. Instead of using a permanent magnet, like I did in the previous demonstration where I moved it back and forth inside the coil, this time I'm going to use an electric magnet. What I've got in my hand here is another coil of wire, and I'm just going to set it next to this coil, and I've got a battery right here, and as soon as I close the switch, power goes into this coil. You might notice when I close the switch, the light here flashes just for a second. It comes on, then it goes off. When I open it, it comes on and goes off again. When I close it again, it comes on and goes off. When I open it, it comes on and goes off. On the other hand, if I was to take and open and close it real fast like this, you could see if I did it fast enough, I could actually get that light to stay on. That's really the basis of a switch mode power supply. It's the ability to induce a current in a... It's the ability to induce power in a secondary coil from a primary coil. The primary coil is always the coil which you're applying your power to. Now, believe it or not, if I have a coil with fewer turns on the primary side and more turns on the secondary side, I get a higher voltage out of the secondary side. Whereas if I was to apply power to this coil, and this was my secondary, since this coil has many more turns on it, it would lower the voltage. Now if you look at transformers, all they are is really for the most part a couple of coils separated by uh, a thin uh, layer of plastic here and they're they're magnetically coupled together through the steel that goes through the center of this coil and back around it like this. I don't know if you can see the two separate coils here but this is a pretty common transformer. You've got one coil here and one coil here and it can either be a step up transformer or a step down depending on which side you hook it up to. Now the purpose of having a steel core really does help transfer energy from one coil to the other. In fact, if you look at this original configuration here, if I take this coil this time and I put a steel bar in between and I open and close the switch, you'll notice that light comes on a whole lot brighter than it did the first time. This helps couple a magnetic field between this coil and this coil. Now seeing how it was necessary to actually have a moving magnetic field in order to generate electricity, you might be wondering how is it I'm able to generate electricity in this coil without moving this electromagnet here? Well, the reason I'm able to do so is because when I open and close the switch, I actually am creating a moving magnetic field. Every time this electric magnet becomes energized, it actually creates a magnetic field that extends outward, and it passes through this other coil here. And when I open the switch, the magnetic field collapses back in on the coil from which it came, and it induces a secondary voltage here. That's why, once again, if you take a look, you close the switch, the light comes on for a second. Open the switch, the light comes on for a second. Again, I'd have to be going real fast to sustain that light to where you wouldn't notice it flickering on and off. Now what I'm holding next to the coil here is an additional coil which is plugged right into the wall outlet so it's got 110 or 120 volts AC going into it. You'll notice something very interesting. When I turn this coil on, the light stays on here and it doesn't seem to flicker anymore. Actually, it is flickering, but it's happening so quickly you can't detect it. Because what's happening right now is I'm putting out a pulsed electromagnetic wave out of this coil that's turning on and off 120 times a second. It's what they call 60 cycles AC, but as far as the on and off time, it would actually be 120 times a second. Now, if you were to move this, you might be able to see it flickering when you move it back and forth because your eyes tend to store something in their memory called persistence of it. In this part of the demonstration, I have my coil hooked up to a couple of light emitting diodes this time. 
only I have them hooked them up in opposite polarity. Well, that's kind of hard to explain, but let me show you what happens here. When I spin the magnet, you notice that the lights alternate. When one lights up, the other one goes off. And there's a reason for that. The reason is what's coming out of this coil is alternating current. Let me make AC a little simpler for you, though. Okay, this time I'm holding the light emitting diodes in my hand, and you'll notice that as I take my 9 volt battery and I switch the polarity back and forth, the lights alternate just as they did when I had a coil. They say electricity travels from negative to positive. It has a particular direction, and diodes will block it going in one direction. The way I've got these lights wired on here, one of them blocks it when I turn it around, whereas the other one blocks it when I turn it the other way. So I'm changing the negative and positive back and forth here, and you see what happens. So as you can see, what I'm generating here is alternating current. This time I hooked up this configuration so you can observe another phenomenon. I've got my coil here, which is a primary coil. This time I've got two light emitting diodes. Now you watch when I close the switch here, the light comes on on one side. When I open it, the other light comes on. Again, that's showing how the magnetic field I'm creating from this coil has a particular direction. And determining or depending on the direction, it will light one light or the other. You can see when, when I close the switch, and the magnetic field is moving outward towards this coil, it lights this one up. When I open the switch, it lights this side up here. And actually, if I could do it fast enough, they would have both appeared to be lit. Now here you'll notice when I take this other coil and put it near my secondary coil, both lights appear to be lit up. That's not necessarily true. They're still alternating. It's just happening so quickly you can't tell. Remember, I've got 120 on-off cycles coming from this coil here. Now because I'm producing alternating current, you can actually see it on the oscilloscope here as I spin this magnet next to the coil. Now normally you'd see a sine wave with rounded edges, but because I've got two diodes here that conduct at a certain voltage, what's happening is it's clipping off the top half of the waveform. Now because most devices and circuits use direct current, we need to find a way to convert this alternating current to direct current and that's the purpose of diodes and bridge rectifiers. Now if you think back of the waveform you just saw on the oscilloscope, it looks something like this, only the tops were leveled off because the diodes were conducting at a certain voltage. <clears throat> if I was to take this circuit here, for example, if I had alternating current coming out of this battery, of course we know batteries are DC, but if the polarity keeps changing, you've got alternating current. <clears throat> if I was to take a diode and place it in line here, it would only allow the positive going polarity to pass through the diode in this direction and the negative going polarity to pass through back this way. And that would turn AC to DC. And the waveform, it would cut half the waveform like this. Depending on which side had the diode, it would either take this half off or this half down here. Now a more efficient means to convert alternating current to direct current is with a bridge rectifier when you have four diodes configured like this. Basically you've got your negative and positive going in this direction and look what we did the diodes pointed only positive can come out this way and if we look at the other one it's the same thing you've got the negative and positive going in this way only positive can come out that way in the direction of the arrow and if you look at if, if it were negative going voltage negative can only go in this direction and come out here so you've got your negative coming out this way now if you've ever looked at a schematic of a transformer before you'll know that this is your primary side since it's hooked to your plug there and this is your secondary side. In this case it would be a step-down transformer and what comes out of here is alternating current as you can see when it passes through this bridge rectifier and these diodes it becomes direct current. Many transformers have multiple windings in them. You can see this one has three and these two are isolated from each other. The other thing to take note is that many times following a diode you'll find a capacitor on the output side and the purpose of the capacitor is to smooth out the ripple that occurs when you're producing your DC current because even though AC to DC it doesn't mean there aren't going to be some on off cycles in it or what you might refer to as ripple what the capacitor does it fills up with energy as this diode is in the conduct mode and when it's not in the conduct mode the capacitor discharges into whatever load you're trying to power